Today's episode of Yami Noob is dedicated to all the short kings, the lady riders, and anyone who is vertically challenged and wants to get on two wheels. So maybe you're just a literal child who still needs to use the step stool to reach the cookie jar that your parents hide in the top cabinet. These bikes will work great for you too. There's not much more to it than that. Here are the top seven motorcycles for short riders in our humble opinion. This video is sponsored by our longtime friends and supporters at Rockform. Now let's get into it. When it comes to motorcycles, best suited for short riders, it doesn't really get any better than a classic low slung cruiser. And luckily for everyone, there has never been a better assortment of cool stylish cruisers to choose from. In the past, you would have been stuck with some dinky ultra beginner cruiser like the Rebel 250 or V-Star 250, or some slick salesman at Harley Davidson would smooth talk you into buying a brand new Sportster 883 that you'd trade back into them a year later. But today there are approachable cruisers in all different styles, sizes, and budgets. For any new short rider, you can't go wrong with the Rebel 500. It's making a bit more power than the ultra entry level Rebel 300, so we'll manage to hold your interest a little bit longer. The Rebel 500 has a super approachable seat height at a modest 27 inches. It really doesn't get much shorter than that when it comes to full-sized motorcycles. Anyone can sit on this thing and very comfortably flat foot it. An advantage the Rebel has over some other cruisers is that it is quite lightweight, weighing in at just 414 pounds with the optional ABS. Although many cruisers often sit low to the ground, they are commonly quite heavy, which isn't a deal breaker for most riders as the low center of gravity makes it pretty easy to manage with a heavier bike, but the svelte profile of the Rebel is definitely something to consider if you're short and perhaps a little bit weak. I'm just kidding. The more comfortable you feel on a bike, the easier it will be for you to learn, and a lighter motorcycle and a lower motorcycle will be much more approachable. And if having a motorcycle with a low seat height and a light curb weight instills you with confidence, then by all means, follow that path. But if you're not afraid of a heavier bike, the Honda Shadow offers a more retro cruiser flavor compared to the Rebel and sits even lower at just 25.6 inches. But the Shadow is going to weigh right around 540 pounds, so she's quite a big girl all things considered. I'd recommend going to the dealership and sitting on both bikes and really getting a feel for that extra heft. Despite being heavier and a bit more expensive, many short riders or beginner riders have enjoyed the Honda Shadow over the last 40 years. And actually, if you're a more experienced rider who still prefers a motorcycle that's super easy to flat foot, the Rebel 1100 has a small 27.5 inch seat height as well. So there you go, three different cruisers from Honda made for all you shorties out there. And the Rebel 1100 is a really sweet bike. We had one as a giveaway bike a few years ago, really enjoyed it, lots of videos on that one, go and check that out. Short riders and tall riders might seem about as opposite as two people can get, but we all have one thing in common. No, it's not a collective love of motorcycles, although we do have that. It's our love of cell phones. I mean, come on, everyone's got one, and when you're out riding your motorcycle, your sweet little digital lifeline can be put in harm's way. That's why I take advantage of Rockform to keep my phone safe. Rockform makes the best phone cases for motorcycles. Hands down. Mic drop. Okay, I gotta pick that mic back up because I need to finish this ad. Seriously, the Rockform rugged case is an absolute unit. It is drop tested, offers 360 degrees of protection and has an incredibly strong magnet, almost alarmingly strong. Like if you have a loose grip on your phone and walk by a refrigerator, it may very well be pulled from your hand by the magnetic force. But even better is the Rockform phone mounting system. They have handlebar mounts and stem mounts that offer unmatched security. And guess what? The mount has a magnet on it too. But you don't even need that magnetic companion thanks to the quick latching setup. In just two seconds, you can spin your phone onto the mount and it'll be good to go no matter how aggressive your ride. If you have a particularly vibrational motorcycle, get yourself a vibration dampener for extra peace of mind. I use one on my sled because, well, air-cooled Ducati problems. This little unit permanently attaches to the phone mount and protects your phone camera delicates inside from being damaged. Rockform is as good as it gets when it comes to phone cases and mounts for riders and thank you for being a Yammy Noob viewer. You can click the link below and use the code YN25 to get 25% off of your Rockform order. Again, that is YN25 for 25% off. Thanks to Rockform for the continued support. My phone would be destroyed 10 times over if it wasn't for you. Now let's get back to the show. Off-road motorcycles like dual sports and adventure bikes can often feel out of reach for shorter riders thanks to their big wheels and long travel suspension. But BMW, who are arguably one of the largest players in the adventure category, have managed to accommodate shorter riders in the segment for the last 20 years in varying models. If you're in the used market, the F650 GS was produced from 2000 until 2013. For the first half of that production window, it used a single cylinder Rotax engine, and the latter half used a new parallel twin that was actually 798 cc's in displacement. Don't think too hard about that one though. 
Despite the F650 GS Rally Origins, it has actually been regarded as one of the best fitting adventure bikes for smaller riders. The seat sits just shy of 31 inches and used models can be found floating around that utilize factory lowered suspension that sits at just 30 inches. As BMW GS's lineup has evolved over the last years, they have managed to retain that similar approachability in both the 750 GS and the subsequent 800 GS. These middleweight adventure tourers sit right at 32 inches in stock form, which all things considered considered is pretty low for the category, but they can also be equipped with factory low seats that bring the seat height down to 31 inches or a factory lowering kit that would bring it down to 30 inches. So if you're vertically challenged a rider looking for a motorcycle in this style, BMW's got you covered if you're willing to pay for the upgrades, or keep an eye out for used models that are already equipped with such modifications. Sport bikes can sometimes be intimidating for shorter riders as well. The taller seat height and committed ergonomics and aggressive geometry aren't always the most confidence inspiring when you're trying to stay balanced and coming to and leaving stops. It's like riding a mountain bike versus a road bike. Just one's way more easy to ride, obviously. But as far as approachable, entry-level sport bikes, it really gets no better than the Ninja 400 and the Ninja 500 that's set to replace it. These bikes sit at just shy of 31 inches, which is really quite accommodating for a sport bike, where 33-inch seat heights are not uncommon at all. The Ninja 400 is quite a light machine as well, weighing at just 360 to 370 pounds, depending on if your model has ABS. The Ninja 500 is going to be a tad heavier from the added displacement, but will still be incredibly manageable for most riders. The Ninja 400 just stays winning. Seriously, I still think it's one of the best beginner sport bikes. There may be other beginner sport bikes like the CBR 300R or the Yamaha R3 that are on par height-wise, but just not on par with the performance technology or features. The closest competitor to the Ninja would truthfully be the CF Moto 450 SH, which has the same 31-inch seat height, makes comparable power, and is packed to the gills with features for less than 5,500 bucks. It's also worth mentioning that the corresponding Z400 and Z500 naked bikes from Kawasaki also sit relatively low, just shy of 31 inches. So. There, you got like five bikes for the price of one in this bit. Also, MT-03. I think that bike has a 29.5 inch seat height. So if you're looking for something in that naked bike category that's super easy to ride, that's definitely one of them. It's like almost like a Grom. You may also think that scramblers would be off limits for short riders too, facing some of the same limitations as adventure bikes, such as larger wheels and long travel suspension. But the Triumph Scrambler 900 is actually pretty approachable with a seat height of just 31 inches. The Scrambler 900 uses the 900cc parallel twin found in the Bonneville T100 and Speed Twin 900. And actually, each one of these bikes are equally as approachable for short riders too. The T100 is a 31 inch seat height and the Speed Twin is even lower at 30.9. Also, Speed Twin is a fantastic bike. I got the chance to ride one of these a while back, did a whole review, super good. But we're splitting hairs here. I know for some riders, one tenth of an inch can be the difference between life and death. That might be a little dramatic, but I think you understand. The point being, Triumph has quite a few options for shorter riders in their modern classic lineup. The Bonneville is obviously your quintessential retro roadster with a 270 degree crank parallel twin, a flat bench seat, spoked wheels, and all sorts of vintage flair. The Scrambler 900 uses the same platform with a 19 inch front wheel, semi knobby tires, an upswept exhaust, and a skid plate. The Speed Twin 900 is the slightly slightly more modern take on the Bonneville with cast wheels, a different exhaust, and a cleaner, more contemporary overall look. All bikes make around 64 ponies and 59 foot-pounds of torque, so it is cool to know that they are accommodating motorcycles for short riders that aren't just outright beginner bikes that make 45 horses. I mean, even the new Scrambler and Street 400 bikes from Triumph sit taller than the 900 models do, so there you have it. Short Triumph simps, you're all set. And since we're on the topic, the Triumph Trident 660 is really approachable as well. The Trident sits right at around 31 inches, making it about a half inch taller than a Yamaha MT-03 and a half inch shorter than an MT-07, which isn't bad for a naked bike that makes 81 horsepower. The Trident is a neat motorcycle that I've had a good amount of experience with as I've ridden, reviewed, and given away a couple of them over the years. The Trident 660 brings a lot of value to the lower end of the middleweight motorcycle segment, where the offerings have become a little homogenous over the years. The Triumph has a unique three-cylinder engine that makes a good amount of linear power. Its design and styling cues are unique as well, lending itself more to the neo-retro end of the spectrum compared to the bionicle cyborg insect looks you find on most other naked bikes these days. And I feel like the Trident's 31-inch seat height is another characteristic that sets it apart from some other motorcycles in its ranks. 
It actually has been said by the motorcycle market research that seat height and power output are the two biggest considerations that motorcycle buyers prioritize when shopping for new motorcycles at the dealership. And since bikes that make a decent amount of power are more often than not on the taller side, I'm sure short motorcycle buyers get excited when they learn about bikes with low seat heights that aren't just outright beginner bikes. Speaking of, short riders aren't just limited to smaller entry-level cruisers either, where a short rider might not feel super comfortable on an 800-pound touring motorcycle, they might want something with a little more juice than a Rebel 500 or something a bit more American than a Rebel 1100. The Indian Scout has practically the lowest seat height of any motorcycle on the list today, coming in at an ultra-low 25.6 inches, leaving it tied with the Honda Shadow. And despite its stature, the Scout is pretty far from a beginner bike and would make a good cruiser for an intermediate rider who's shaped like Hank Hill's dad. The Scout has a 69 nice cubic inch engine so that's like 1100 something if i remember correctly it's a cruiser so engine size doesn't mean a whole lot of anything when a 2000 cc harley davidson makes like 70 horsepower but anyways the scout has a nice modern liquid cooled v-twin that makes 100 horsepower and 72 foot pounds of torque it's a lot of fun to ride we gave one away it's actually one of my favorite cruisers on the market nowadays but yeah the rear tire super slidey super squirrely it's a lot of fun to ride but not good for a beginner the scout's a pretty stout machine weighing 540 pounds, but it's very easily managed thanks to its short seat height. The seat height is actually something to be wary of as a taller rider. It is so damn short that if you're above 5'8", sometimes it can feel like you're on a little kid's big wheel waddling around with your knees up by your chest. But for short riders, it's a good fit. So for those who don't remember, I've made a few negative comments about the Royal Enfield Himalayan in the past, but is it any good? Mm. No. 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 God, please, no. We don't need to rehash that here. There's no point in referring to how underpowered and ill-equipped it is for both on and off-road riding of the old one. The new one fixed a lot of those issues, okay, and I went and wrote it in the Himalayas, all right. It's not the point. But I will say, as is a result of my constructive criticism, Royal Enfield completely redesigned the Himalayan from the ground up and then invited me out to the actual Himalayas to get some real-world seat time on the new model. Fancy that. It's leaps and bounds a better machine in practically every way, despite the strange stalling phenomenon that hopefully will be fixed by the time the bike comes stateside later this year. And it just dies. For whatever f***ing reason, this thing just keeps dying on me, man. And actually, we figured out what that issue was. Apparently, the kickstand kept bouncing up and down and hitting the kickstand kill switch. Not only is it new and improved, it is also short rider friendly as far as adventure bikes go. The seat is adjustable with the stock seat. It's at the 32.5 inches in the lowest position, but it can also be equipped with the low seat from the factory. It lowers it down to 31.7 inches. That might not be the toddler approved 25 and a half inches you find on the Indian Scout, but that definitely is not bad for an adventure bike. The Himalayan seat is also narrow, which makes it even easier to get your feet down on the ground. So not only will the new Himalayan 450 be a worth while addition to the entry-level ADV market, it will also be another option for short riders looking to see the world from a taller perspective on the top of a mountain range. So there you have it, a nice handful of bikes approved for shorter riders. Despite there being many options across most categories, don't forget that the more experienced you become as a rider, the more comfortable you'll get on larger, taller motorcycles. So don't feel as you'll be limited forever. I've seen plenty of short rider riding many tall motorcycles. It's not a big deal. But with so many disadvantages you'll probably face on a daily basis, being stuck to ultra short motorcycles will not have to be another one. Thanks for making it to the end. Thank you for Rock Farm for supporting today's video. I will catch you guys later. Fact. The smell of freshly cut grass is actually a plant distress call. The clippings are calling for backup. Goodbye. Keep watching Yammy Noob.